ask questions, ask things that you may not even, don't be personal now. Like, don't be like, oh, okay, so like how many babies you got and what you do last night? Because that's not the type, that's not the situation you're in. You're in a learning environment. What's up, you guys? It's Adana. I am back with another video for you guys. Okay, so um, I know a lot of you are like in the swing of either putting in your CASPA applications or you're preparing for this new cycle and you're trying to get shadowing hours in and volunteer hours and all of that stuff. So I have a video for you. These are like my little tips about shadowing. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. As many of you know, I did my shadowing. I had a lot of shadowing hours. I had over 300. And that was because I was super, super blessed. And I, I cannot take this for granted. So this is not necessarily your typical by any means, but I needed to get as many shadowing hours in as I possibly could because I didn't necessarily have as many healthcare experience hours that I wanted. And I had an, uh, an amazing time, but <laughs> I had to like be ready and willing. So like my first tip is to be ready for anything. I mean, if the physician calls you over and like you were told by the nurse to stay behind this little line, you better take your behind over there and go where the physician is calling you so that you can see what he's trying to let you see. Because you want to be able to show like, look, I am ready. I'm I am excited about this. I want to learn. So yes. Oh, do you need me to just look and see what you're cutting, what you're, you know, suturing, how the suturing is going? It's a teaching moment and they want to see that you're ready and willing and this is in shadowing but also you can translate this to rotations as well you always need to be ready and willing to learn and to see and to listen to whatever that physician the PA the NP is telling you to do so I was ready I was on it and I had an amazing experience doing that when they would call me over to see something or show me possible tumorous uh, tissue that they had just excised from a patient I was able to also go down to the pathology lab and so when they asked you questions, like the pathologist asked me questions and I didn't necessarily know what they were talking about, but I admitted that. And I was like, well, you know, I don't know, but what exactly does that mean? And so that's another thing. Don't be afraid to admit that you don't know something because if you don't know it, they'll help you understand. They'll let you know what you should know, right? And it's okay to not know it once, but it's not okay to not know it twice. So if they told you about something on that first, time that first day and you didn't know it and you know you're just there the shadowing pre-pa student that's okay but if they ask you the same question the next time and you're like oh i know they told me this but i don't know it that is absolutely not okay all right and this is what like this is coming from a physician one of the guest lecturers that came to talk to me in pa school told me this so from a physician from a preceptor he's saying it's okay to not know it once but it's not okay to not know it twice all right another tip is to always be on time and being on time meaning like 15 to 20 30 minutes early right you guys know <laughs> from some of my videos like i'm like man i hate being the late black girl i don't want that stereotype like man she on cp time i was a little late tonight i was running on cpt <laughs> which stands for jokes that white people should not make. Sorry, Hillary. I was running on CP time. That's not, I don't, I don't like jokes like that. No, I don't want that, right? And so especially, especially I'm talking to you guys, my people of color, please, please, please. If you are shadowing, if you are rotating, be on time. Like you don't want anything to ruin your opportunity. You don't want anything to leave a sour taste in their mouth about you just even from the jump. The fact that you're coming in a little late or barely on time, that's not okay. Like be there on time, 15 to 30 minutes early, ready to roll, okay? Like that is like, I'm telling you, that is key and they will notice. People will notice if you're not on time or if you're just rushing in. So just make sure that that is part of your repertoire. Always be inquisitive. So I had like, don't, you know, I talked about them calling you over, but ask questions. This is your opportunity to ask them questions about the profession, about their job, 
job about their experiences in the past. So always be inquisitive, ask questions, ask things that you may not even, don't be personal now. Like, don't be like, oh, okay, so like how many babies you got and what you do last night? Because that's not the type, that's not the situation you're in. You're in a learning environment. So ask like actual pertinent questions. Like, okay, so I saw that you guys suture this aspect. Why did you do it that way? So make sure that you're actually learning and you're taking in this opportunity because it is few and far between you guys. It's not easy to get shadowing experience. So the more the opportunity that you get and the better, the best impression that you can give them, the more willing they're going to be to allow you to come back and not just you, but other students, because you're not just doing this for yourself, but you're doing it for other students as well. Okay. And then lastly, after the, everything is said and done, uh, go ahead, you guys, and leave them like a thank you note, send them a, an email, you know, thank them there in person, obviously, because they didn't have to take their time out to do that. But then also like do go the extra mile, you know, so because you might be asking them for a letter of recommendation in the future. And so you want to make sure that you're able to not only be a make a lasting impression in their mind, but then also like stay in touch with them in the future, you know. So after you've left and you've given your thank you note and you said, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm not taking this for granted. Stay in touch. Say, hey, I just applied or I'm going to apply. Can I have that letter of recommendation? And then after you've done that, hey, I've sent in my applications. I'm really excited. Again, thank you so much for the opportunity. Never stop reaching back and thanking those people because they didn't have to do it. All right, so those are my tips, you guys. I hope they are helpful. I hope um, you guys can use some of them and maybe it makes your shadowing experience a lot better. I know it just enhanced my experience tremendously and that's why I was able to call the person that I precepted or shadowed with and um, they were like, yeah, come on over to my house and I'll write this um, letter right now type of thing. So take these things into consideration. I think they will be very beneficial to you. If you have any questions or comments about anything else, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. And thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Oh, wait, if you guys haven't already done so, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA and subscribe to my channel. All right, I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.